Colleen. The meeting tonight is for the conduct of town business by the town board. The public is invited to participate at the items marked on the agenda of public comment. During that segment of the meeting, if you have a question or comment for the supervisor, please raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. Please state your full name and limit your remarks to three minutes. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation. Thank you very much. I'd like to start the meeting off with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. and freedom, especially those in harm's way, and also for all our enforcement officers, men and women. Thank you very much. <laughs> Need a motion to approve the agenda? There's no changes? No changes. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve minutes from the July 10th, 2017 town board meeting. I'll so. make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Authorized payment of bills in the amount of $130,328.32. Pay the bills. I'll make that motion. I'll okay. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So move. Uh, I don't believe there's any presentations tonight. Comments on the agenda. Any comments on the agenda? Uh, Mark, would you just come to the podium, please? State your name. Uh, Mark Reynolds of an Ulster Times. I just, uh, when you get to resolution uh, 84, on the work yep. at the station. I wondered if you could elaborate on all the things that are going to be done, and I don't know if you have a breakdown of costs or anything like that, uh, of what that RFP is. Actually, the bid package. Uh, Thank you, Ed. James? James. So we're going to give this guy a little personal breaks. James. <laughs> James Garofalo for Young <laughs> Avenue. I see that under item nine you have an open discussion, and I hope one of the topics that you will start talking about is the short term lodging. And I've uh, made a, a copy of something that Philadelphia does for their, for their homes. And I'll leave that with the board. Appreciate but I hope it. Why don't you give it to me? Oh, I got give it to Ed. But I hope that you will begin that discussion, not only because there's a bed and breakfast being proposed, but because, you know, we need some, some laws to help protect people. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. New business, uh, so motion to advertise for a Board of Assessment Review position. Uh, right now that's held by uh, Mrs. Delator. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to advertise. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's just the procedure. She did uh, send a, a letter to my attention saying that she would like to continue. Yeah, being on that uh, board. Oh, what the is the position? Yeah, <laughs> with the same position. Uh, okay. uh, workshop topic. I thought we we just uh, briefly go over the uh, train station community forum. Uh, I kind of agree with you, Howard, about those two items. Okay. Uh, I did. Uh, Change the event fee residential to 300 
and non-residential to 500. Is that in line with? That's in line with the pavilion. Pavilion, okay. So how it brought up a good thing about uh, anyone over 16 must have a valid New York State fishing license. I think that was. Uh, that was from the park. That's from the park. So we could strike that out if everybody agrees. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we remember we talked about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we talked about it, it never yeah. took it out. We didn't talk, take it out. And also there's one about. Boat. The boat. Yeah, the prohibited as uses, I think. Similar uh, thing. That was just carry over. I thought so. Um, uh, Do you know where that in the is? Park. It's on the prohibited list of prohibited things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. prohibited. Needs uh, uh, it says place towards the bottom, isn't it? Mm. Oh yeah. The use of type of boat is a boat is prohibited. Uh, right here. Yeah. Okay. We'll strike that out. And uh, what do you uh, what is it, what do you feel about getting a electronic uh, lock uh, instead of having uh, Tom go down? I think it's a good idea. It's just have we you have an ever opinion? investigated that as far as the cost and no, how but it I could works. do that. I think you could change the serial every time somebody else comes for this way. Yeah, you reprogram. Uh, reprogram every time, because like, otherwise I don't. The only Speak up there, Joe. The only thing that I'm thinking in my mind is the train station people that are new to the group don't want that antique like doorknob that's on that front door. That might be the hard part of trying to find an electronic one. Good point. So I, the only thing is, so you're, I, my question on that, I, I didn't put it in the note, but was, are we saying we're gonna, just going to give them a code and they're just, here you go, here's the train station? Yeah. So I mean, Basically, so how do we, know, how do we confirm what the, what, like, go over what the rules and regulations and what, uh, this is what it looks like now and we expect it to look like this one. Well, everything's <laughs> pretty much here it's spelled out, there. right? Yeah, yeah but what if they say, well, it was like that when I got here? And there's no one there to begin to confirm. Oh, I, and that's my I, I, question. I think Tom Schroeder is, is the main guy, right, to make sure that everything uh, is he, left. He, he would, he would, would he meet them there? And open, he well, the have whole purpose of the lock is so he this way he doesn't to, have to be there so he would, close up and stuff like that. He would check it out, I guess, somehow. But mm -hmm. I, I think before they get their security back, which is quite right. a, it's 100 bucks, mm -hmm. He would check it out to That's see if it was That's what happens in the pavilion. Yeah, yeah. We don't give them the money back. back. Yeah. So it's your hurdle time. with the code potentially could be if they're rented in succession, when they rent the pavilion and pay for it, they're not getting the code. The code, the code can only be received the morning of, especially if there's something the night before. Somebody's going to have to physically go down there, change the code, and they won't be able to get that code until the code has been changed from the previous party the night before. Well, I think I'm gonna have to keep up with what I the code is I think those codes be. you could do electronically. Like we Correct, plug the them code's in. gonna change daily, at party to party. So if I have a party on Friday night, which has the code one, two, three, Saturday can't get no, the code No, what I'm saying, it changed. gets computerized. You do it right on the computer. Oh, I don't think so. No. My brother-in-law does it for really? Myrtle Beach. He has a, oh, maybe they do that. he goes around right the computer, but right. changes it right there. But, but again, they won't be able to get that code to that morning. Like, well, yeah, you won't be able to, like over here, you can't go tonight before and set up, say. Right. Right. Code, code's getting yeah. at 8 o'clock Friday morning. They leave 6, 7, 8, 12 o'clock Friday night. Somebody yeah. wants to get in there Saturday morning. The code has to be received somehow to that new mm -hmm. person. Well, if, we can, if we can electronically do it, then why should you take an email and email to the person that you Somebody's going to have to physically get in there and email that next code the next morning and change the code in well, the block. Unless Does that make it remote, more conducive just have somebody go down here and open Personally, it? I mean, I think like in the beginning, if we really start, if we're doing this, I think we should maybe physically be there, see how it works before we just start saying, okay, oh, the train station's so open. I think we need to get a cost of it, right? First thing. Yeah, it's a good idea. We I could look into but look the, in the cost. The cost of it, but I'll in the meantime, we'll, uh, I don't think we'll we're leave gonna have that they have to come to the clerk. 
and Tom Schroeder would have to open it up for them, and Tom Schroeder would have to close it up. Just like the pavilions run right now. At the yeah. same time. Yeah, because if, the, if it's a code situation, then I have to have the code to give to them, you know, when I, I think when we speak to them, we'd have to just let them know yeah. this is a code I mean, to open it up. it's done all over. I mean, when we go to a bed and breakfast in Newport, yeah. they, they give you the code, you go in, you spend the night. That's the, yeah. first, the person running is actually physically doing the work. I'm saying is you're going to need somebody on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday changing the codes and sending those sending those emails out. It's different. You need a person. If I'm running a B and B, I'm at home knocking them codes out because I'm running the B and B. Well, we have to let's look into what it is because like, there could be where you can pre-program it to change every day, different right. code. I mean, I I don't know how. I mean, there's I so many things that could be done with computers as we all know today. So, but I still think from the very beginning we still should have Tom do this, yeah. and we could. Figure it out as we go a little is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, agree. I also well, I think you need to have a backup for Tom. I mean, he's all by himself. He's going to have two places yeah. now. He's going to do that. Like, <laughs> that's true. That's a lot of work. So I don't think I, we're going to have people need somebody else involved. Well, you'd be surprised. Let's uh, okay. ask Colleen how many times people ask her. Do you think it's going to be heavily? Uh, What's heavily? That? You think it's going to be uh, a lot of demand? I, I think it will be. It will be because mm -hmm. now that you have food, yes. We people call us all the time and want something that's indoors. Mm -hmm. And now that, especially that it's on the river, and mm -hmm. you can bring food in there, I think it will be um, okay. profitable. All right. Wow. Yeah, make, make some money so. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I just hope we don't <laughs> ruin the place. And no, we yeah, can't, we can't let that happen. Yeah, that's you know, a problem. It so, is still in a historic building. That's so let's thing. leave it that um, Tom yeah. takes care of everything. Tom opens it up for the individual, and uh, we'll try it that way. And then I'll look into the lock system to see if that's feasible. Yep. Does anybody like Dan? Because, I mean, when we first started talking about this, <coughs> the, um, the group – Wanted to have a little. I said, I'm sending it to Dan. And I know, like, they couldn't get anybody in their group to say they would do that, right? right. Instead of Tom. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they're kind of the overseers of the train station. So if, if it could be something that they could even help out with, like Eddie's saying, you need a backup. He's running they, up to the, he's running to the right park, he's running down here. Well, something. I think Dan might be the best part. Right. Back up because he lives close to the train station. He lives at I just think Clark's. you need somebody there. So, so I asked Dan about that. So I, I've been emailing Dan and mm -hmm. on this whole issue with the uh, train station policy. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else in this policy that uh, you feel that needs to be addressed? We can change it if we run into problems. We, yeah. yeah. It's not written in stone. Okay. It's good. It's going to be a construction site, I think. Yeah. Uh, we had the resolution today to go out for the bid package, so. So we want to pass this as amended. Is that what we're going to do as far as? Uh, we, we still have time. So, like I said, it's so right now. write it up as amended and then we'll. Yeah, I'll we'll take out the, uh, the thing about the fishing and the uh, views of any type that then any other board sees anything like they would wish to see on this policy, we could address it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. Have a boat for me. Correspondence. Do you want to talk about anything about like with uh, the support? The small house and the maintenance, the daily maintenance. Do you want to even short term one? Short term one. I, I, I really don't, but. No, I mean, I want to read it up on that. I want to read, read about it's it. So, first. So it's a copy of Have you seen this, uh, Tom, about the short, short term home rentals? Nope. Yeah, I'd rather read about it and then address it, James. First time seeing it. It's, it's a lot of I just ask one thing, James. Uh, are they in New York State? Uh, I'm sure there are probably some in New York State. I know New York State has a law that if you are in an apartment or you are sharing with any kind of multiple dwelling residence. This is unfair because nobody could see it, so. Yeah, My bad. Treatment. Yeah, yeah. 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 
James Garofalo. In New York State, they have a law where if you are in a multiple dwelling, so if you're in an apartment and there's other apartments in there, you cannot rent out that for under 30 days. You can do a longer term rental, but you, like you, can't, you can't do these short term rentals. It's different for a house. I mean, I could probably go out and rent my house for under 30 days. And I don't know if you really want to touch that, but one of the things that this does is at least it provides that there are certain protections to make sure that the house is safe and they're fairly easy. But I, you know, I saw a, a webinar on this uh, where they had somebody from Colorado and, and Philadelphia and several other places that were talking about the different ways that they handle this because in some places this is becoming a much bigger problem. You have these destinations Airbnb. such as Philadelphia and, yep. and San Francisco. These are major destination areas and it's you know becoming a big a big problem making sure that these are, are safe. But I'm not only talking about houses and the short term rentals but uh, the overall lodging uh, laws here you know I believe that you can have a hotel you have to have a lobby but I don't think you have to staff it under our law so I mean I think you need to look at the whole yeah, series of different yeah. things to make to, yeah. to make things fairer and reasonable and safe for for people okay thank you James you're welcome can we uh I just want to talk about, I mean, I see that Dave's here tonight. Dave, would you... Uh, Can you come up so we could talk about the discussion about... Yeah, come on up, if you don't mind, Dave. While we're all here, right? What are we going to talk about? I just want to make sure about the, yeah, about the landscaping. So you, you saw the emails today, right, or the text yeah. today? So when me and Howard met you up there, right, we were talking about that one little... What was it, that 30... Five foot section or 40 feet. <clears throat> no, it's a little bit longer than that. Yeah, it's but probably like 150 feet. Yes, yeah, but it's like from the bandstand, That's a bandstand to it's the spillway. Feet. So, so what we talked about, huh? Yes. Yeah, you're good. So what we talked about was, um, I guess we had a concern about somebody want, was concerned about a bird sanctuary habitat for the natural animals, whatever, so on and so forth. So what we did was. Um, we had a meeting last year, and maybe I misunderstood, but we let all the um, the pond vegetation grow back up, whatever that may be. But we still maintain the pond shore because, um, believe it or not, it lessens the garbage that's been thrown along the pond shore when people are walking around it. Uh, we had two bee stingings last year at the park. Haven't had any this year. I don't know if that's anything to do with keeping the vegetation down, but that was part of it too. I guess the person was concerned about the birds, but we let three quarters of Long Pond grow up, you know, untouched. And the interior pond, Round Pond, we made it more so for its more recreation and uh, being able to walk around it in the morning and not have to worry about anything. But I understand that if there's people that want part of it to grow up, that's a decision that well, you I think five gentlemen are going to have to make and, um, and then dictate to me. And then if that's what you want, that's what we'll do. I think it came from, that's what so we're talking about Round Pond, and before you did all your great work, uh, there were cattails there right. in the sections of Round Pond, and people, some people, not a lot of people have talked to me, a couple, yeah, handful, uh, liked the birds, the red, uh, red, uh, red winged blackbirds that liked the cattails, and they wanted to preserve that. Sure. So that's when we had the, on Round Pond, in yep. a section from like, the bandstand sort of roughly to where the, towards to where the, the spillway, spillway is, spillway. Right, correct. Try to make that more um, sanctuary-like. Yeah, with so we're letting, cat the cattails are growing in the water, I, I thought. Well, yeah, know. unfortunately they're not. They're not coming back. Right. They it, will the, eventually the, if we the let loose, them go. The loose yeah. drive, I mean, I'm sure cattails are a rhizome. They, they spread like wildfire. Sure. They can get out of control yeah. if you're not, you don't control yeah. them. But uh, so that that's the so did she that was no no just just well the cattails provide the environment for right. the birds yeah right. and that section of the pond the rest of it yeah let's make it clear and the section towards the pavilion where make that more uh you're, saying on, the you're saying on the shore now not, i'm not saying i mean 
And the sh well, the cattails grow in the water. In the right, but I'm saying water. he's still going to keep the shore clear. No, that's well, what we're doing now. Right. We are keeping the shore clear. Right, so we're not going to. And we're, gonna, we're letting the vegetation in the water grow back. But what I'm saying is, if you guys decide, let's let the pond shore grow up also in that designated area, then we'll designate maybe, that area. Maybe and let that's it go. something we got to look at. Maybe okay. if we're a, 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 a small, you know, a couple I of think, feet or something like that. I think if, from what Dave's saying, though, is he lets it teach you cutting back on the shore and allows them to start growing in the water. They're going to grow up high enough where you can have all the birds you want for them. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to encourage a Well, we're, we're going to get together next week, correct? Yeah, yes. we are. Let's yeah. all get together next week. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll assess I mean, it uh, There's a lot of, I mean, cat it depends on what you want to do for a pond. You know, if you want to support natural habitat and birds and bees and snakes and reptiles and all that stuff, you're going sure. to let the vegetation grow. If you don't, you're going to cut everything down. It depends on, so I think the thought was the area of the pond towards the pavilion, not so much the vegetation as you get closer to Long Pond, make it a little bit more natural, more wild. That, that was kind of the agreement I thought we had. So yeah, we'll talk about it next week. Okay. There's a lot of good information out there about pond management, so we can talk about that too. I mean, yeah. I like it the way it is personally. <laughs> so do I. Well, That's my, you know, I, just, I like the, the grass cut to the, to, the, to the thing, and if those things come up in the water, that's great. But to me, well, I know a lot of people that walk that thing every day, and they don't want to be having snakes and bees and everything well, else coming out. Let's get together yeah, we'll next attract. week. We yeah. will. Yeah. Figure, yeah. figure out a date. We'll all get yeah. together. We'll, 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 we'll walk it. We'll look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then whatever we all decide, then we'll take it from yeah. there. Yeah, that's why I organized the meeting, yeah. so this way yeah. we get on the same page. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Good? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Great job. Somebody out there has a question, yeah. Luke, Luke, you have next time, yeah. We may go. We'll transplant them. We'll put them over there. Luke, next they're, time they're, you have to come up and give your name. They, they, <laughs> they have pluses and minuses, no doubt about it. They're, they're, they're a natural. Yeah. James got a follow. Okay. James has always got his follow. Come on, James. This is his third one. I know it's a good one. It's your third one tonight, remember? <laughs> I'd like to make a suggest James Garrett follow again. I'd like to make a suggestion that maybe you should ask someone from DEC to come and take a look at it and give a different opinion. There is a lot of information out there. Now. I don't think we want to bring DEC up there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> I'm not doing That's that. The one people you don't want to call, James. No. We, we, they'll James. find something else. Thank you, James. If you don't have to call them, don't call them. <laughs> Let them call us. Okay. Oh, boy. So I, I, we're going to have that meeting so everything will be straight now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're on correspondence. Uh, the, I had that letter from uh, Joan stating that uh, she, want, she would like to be reappointed. And also I have a letter from uh, Max Faircourt, uh, Pastor Maya, uh, from the Faith Church of God. They do this every... Every year, Every right? Year. Yeah, they raise the uh, They take a few days, and uh, they're asking to waive the, pray, the uh, fee on the uh, pavilion in the park and uh, check with the town clerk. Everything is good. Yes. So uh, need a motion to waive that. They did it last year and the year. I think this is their third year. Yeah. Yeah, I'd make that motion. I'm good. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One Going back to that, since you brought that up, that's one thing we're going to have to look at with the train station. Now. Yep. We can't just be letting people take that building all the time, like for anything. No, I think that uh, when it arises, when we'll, uh, yeah. we'll look at it and see. I mean, I'm thinking we should put something in here. It's, it's only way for non nonprofit organizations. Organizations like Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, and they should have their non -profit. baseball things, or something. I mean, but I don't know because you know how it starts to go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Because there's more expense with down there. You're gonna have in the winter time. Yeah, people are gonna it. want it. Heat, cost, electric cost, lights. Exactly. I agree with you. Sir. <clears throat> more so than the pavilion. Even. Yep. Pavilion's open. So I look into that for non-profit. Okay, moving right along, item 11, public comment. Anybody has a comment, please step up to the podium, give your name. 
Mr. Coupart. Bob Coupart, 52 Western Avenue. I have two questions. Um, one being the uh, D&D, Dunkin' Donuts. The, uh, the status on that, I'm not sure what's well, going on. We passed the planning board stage three months ago. So. Uh, well, there's been some rumor around town that they're no longer going to. I'm bringing this to the board's attention. Rumors, we don't, we don't go there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that they're not going to be... Uh, last I heard, Mickey Jamal was on vacation in Alaska. He's going to be back. Uh, we'll have a conversation with him. Okay. Uh, as far as I know right now, the project is going forward. I think they're getting bids. So. Well, with the one, the other Dunkin' Donuts being built in Highland now, I'm yes, just, it's yes, just something that should be, should yeah, be concerned about. It's a political year and all that, oh. but, uh, uh, the whole thing is that that Dunkin' Donuts is just a Dunkin' Donuts. It's not a gas station, a convenience store, five pumps, and two diesels. We're all on the same page. We want this to happen. My question was, you know, this is what the scuttlebutt out on the street is now that it's not going to happen. So I asked you if you had heard anything about it. No. Uh, and it's got I nothing to do with been... politics. It's got well, something you know, to do... And I, has, okay. I also have another question. Yeah. Well, it passed the planning board stage. It's That's in their hands to continue with the development of the project. And we've, uh, we tried to contact a couple of people. We haven't gotten a response. And like I said, Mickey Jamal was in Alaska fishing. And I believe he came back a couple of days ago. And uh, I'll find out what the status is and I'll report at the next meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. The number two is the um, the B&B, &B, the Dam Scanner House that's yeah. being, uh, that was in front of the uh, planning board the other night. Yeah. And I guess there's, you know, there's there was some, uh, no action was taken either way. Yeah, I was uh, there. Yeah. And the feeling of this board, if, if something needs to be addressed, like a code change, zoning change. Is the board willing to, to look at that? We are, of course we are. Of course we are. Okay. That's why we do what we do on 9W with the overlay district. We're always looking to help support and change codes. Sure, we can. support that project also, Tom. You know, uh, unfortunately, it's a state law that it has to be owner-occupied, and Mr. Corkins right here, and we've tried everything in our power to make that happen, that project. That's a, it's a state law? I don't know. Yeah. Definition of a bed and breakfast by New York State standards is an owner occupied. Home occupation, basically, right? It's a home occupation, owner occupied. And, uh, I just did a uh, interpretation for the uh, planning board today. It was uh, given to the planning board secretary. Unbeknownst to her, it's on her desk. But uh, that and it was sent to the lawyers. But it is a state law that it needs to be owner occupied. Yeah, you can't change the definition of what it is under the New York State definition of bed and breakfast. I mean, again, the, the, the occupants had other options as far as, you know, whether it was a uh, boarding house or whatever other options potentially would have, but then the district doesn't allow it. So, again, the, the, re the residential district is confined to single one-family homes as home occupation owner-occupied, so the commercial entities don't start forming within the residential district, especially in the art districts in town. Whereas potentially, I appreciate what the, the owner did to that property and fixed it up and, and made it much nicer. Absolutely. We also have to be uh, aware of the surrounding residents who are not in favor of the project because of transient people coming in and out of the property, um, unbeknownst to them who they are and you know what they're doing at that house. That's why the the state looks at it as owner-occupied because if the owner is home, they're going to be more aware of who they're allowing to be in the bed and breakfast, and they're going to be living with those people, so that it'll be a little bit more stringent on who they allow in the house. The, the, the lack of the owner occupying the home um, and not being there would allow for transient rental 
to multiple people and again with no supervision not knowing who's in there who gives the surrounding area of the residence and on comfortability of not knowing who's in that house and not being policed at some point creating a motel hotel situation which again is you know not allowed in that district so we, we've done everything we can to it's, it's the same thing uh, with chestnut patrolling this board has gone beyond trying to make this happen we know that this is a great thing for the town of Marlboro uh, bed and breakfast you know it complements everything that's happening at the Falcon that's happening in the neighborhood uh, unfortunately sometimes the law is what it is as you probably know being a supervisor for eight years uh, it's, it's out of our hands we've actually Tom I think we met uh, with mr. and mrs. Cole about three four times at least yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we have Few times. So, so there's nothing that this board if, if need be if you know if it came if, down if, to pushing stuff there's I nothing else so if, if we could do anything we would do it yeah I mean I don't think it's a closed case yet so it's still in the works you're you're doing your work and we'll see what happens right so their next step at this point is ZBA still in front of the planning board ZBA obviously has authority over my opinion um, they went to the planning board they presented their case planning board made some observations on what was going to happen at the property um, some things are that are left unsaid but full disclosure opted for the planning board for an interpretation by myself as a zoning officer um, again I, I put that, that opinion out today and the uh, the applicants have every opportunity to go to the zoning board of appeals for a different decision I guess you would say than I, they opted to, I opted today the planning board had two concerns um, I had issue with one and the other one I necessarily didn't have an issue with but again I, I don't claim to know all tell all I, I give my opinion I give my interpretation and the applicants are you know able to go to zoning board of appeals to, to overrule my opinion on it but based on the facts that were handed to me by the planning board again these were facts in writing that the applicant applied, put in writing, and had the planning board confused, and that's why it ended up back in my lap. All right. Well, I'm sure that this board will do anything that they can in their power, if need be, to make sure that this thing comes to fruition yeah. somewhere along the line. I'm we'll sure. Thank you. In our power. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I personally do, Tom. I have a problem with someone renting out a house that they're not occupied in on a daily or weekly basis. I have a real problem with that for all the reasons he just stated. The people that are around that, that house have rights too. And they don't know who's in that house from day to day. It's, that's why we have the law. So I, it is a great thing. And they knew this before they started <laughs> renovating that place. And they continue to renovate with the law right in, right in their hand. And they continue to do it. So, I mean, I feel for what their situation is. I think it's a great thing, but again, there's a law, and they refuse to listen to the law and move forward on a project that wasn't approved. So I have a problem with that, that someone's gonna rent out a house that they're not occupied in on a daily or weekly basis. And I would, for one, would not change the law. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. That's my opinion. I, I just think other people have rights too. It's not just the one person. You can't make laws just for one person or three people. You got 8,000 people in this town, all right? And we got to look at that too. So it might be, it might not be the popular thing to say, but that's what, that's, that's what it is, you know? So unfortunately, that's how I feel at least. Yeah. You want to take a chair, James, and just... <laughs> yeah, why don't you sit here? This is, this is four now. It's over the limit. <laughs> Man, James, you're at four tonight. You're, you're going to lose two next week. Yeah, James. James Garofalo. Uh, with regard to Chestnut Patrolling, it was my understanding that they received two pieces of permission. One is they got permission to take down all the trees before the, the bat uh, roosting uh, period, and they did that. 
and it was my understanding that they also got permission to demolition the building, which has not been done. Um, and I think that they have. They had to post a bond. understanding is different than my understanding. I don't think they. The, that migration was irrelevant because it was irrelevant to the town of Marlboro. So didn't, didn't trees could have came down at any time. Exactly. Um, and they, at this point, do not have permission for demolition because yeah. I still haven't gotten the asbestos report. So there's no approvals for any demo and they yeah. can't move forward with it at all. They haven't come The demo the was based on <laughs> other things that had to happen, right? Or yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Then, then I stand corrected and I thank you for filling me in. Thank you, uh, Mike Dovich from Marlboro. Um, in regards to the B and B um, and the state law, I, I find it very interesting that the state and Ulster County are pushing tourism as our main source of revenue. Yet we have laws that impede that. Now, does Frank Scartados is, is he aware of this law and that it's holding up a business in Marlboro? I want. Let me correct that. Something. Only, only We're because not holding up a business. Huh. The business could happen. Someone has to occupy the building, and they could be operating tomorrow. No one's holding up any business but the person that owns the building. Okay, but all right, there's a law, what, what, Mike. Right, and the law states it's owner occupied. occupied. Right, well, so be owner occupied, and you could do it. That's the end of the story. All okay. right, and with that point in mind, there are tourism destinations like the Outer Banks of North Carolina that rent entire homes, no owner occupation. They have very few problems down there. Their revenue is through the roof. And how are we going to compete with that? Okay. For, secondly, are they in, dead right in the residential in the middle of a town? Not all of them. They're not bed and, and breakfast it's a, it's either. It's not bed and breakfast. It's a different scenario. They're condominiums. They're homes but for rent. They're homes for rent. Short-term okay. rental. We're talking about a home that they're renting out rooms. <clears throat> right. They're renting out a room and inside what? a house. Okay. You could have 50 people in that house. We wouldn't even know. How would we know? There's no regulation of it. He doesn't know anything about it. There's nothing at the clerk's office. There's nothing at the supervisor's office. You could have 50 people in a house every, every week, different 50 people. How would you know? There's no regulation of it. <clears throat> this is why it has to be owner-occupied. I think the owner would be concerned having 50 well, people some in the house. Them, Nate, I, I would, I'm, sure, I would sure, say, I'm sure once he got the water bill, it would be a shock. I would say this owner definitely would probably be I mean, good at renting people. but. That doesn't mean if other people won't, because once you do it for one, you open up Pandora's box. All okay, right? but, but the point being so is... So maybe they'll have a house right next to your house, and they'll be renting 50 people a day, but, but and you that, might not like it then. As long as they're quiet. That's yeah. not what a bed and breakfast is, though. It's a, somebody's private home that they have a couple of extra rooms they want to rent out. It's a home occupation. If they want to go to the next level and get 50 people, then you get into an inn and so forth, and that's when you require... All kinds of additional safety uh, yeah. measures, right? But how do you know who so, they're renting it to, Howard? Well, I know renting. that, but I, the point is, there's there's a bed and breakfast, and there's boarding houses and inns. They're all different things, and the bed and breakfast is okay. It's supposed to be. I got a couple extra rooms. I want to make some extra income. I, I live here. I'm not going to let it get crazy because I live here, and it's kind of self-regulated in that way. I know all of us have done rented bed and breakfast, and there's nobody there through Airbnb, and it's, it's a real problem. It's not, not just Marlboro's problem, but uh, so. And, and, and overall, the, if I can make clear to the board real quick, I guess, yeah. as, as Howard brings up, Mr. Baker brings up, Airbnb is, is, means absolutely nothing. Right. It's like calling facial tissue Kleenex. Right. I mean, Airbnb is just a, you know, it's a term. It's still a bed and breakfast. And again, right. what we do in any town, any state, is, is you declare what it's going to be, you classify it, and then that classification gets put in zoning based on where it goes. And then and you go from there. I mean, a bed and breakfast is allowed in certain districts, but like Mr. Baker said, it's, it's, it's owner-occupied, and, and, and that's what it was meant for. Above and beyond the bed and breakfast, there's the inns, there's the butter rooms, there's the motels, there's the hotels, there's the boarding houses. So, that, you know, so everything has a place. It, what we have to do as a municipality, as a state, is if somebody comes in my office, we have to place it. A uh, prime example would be the wind turbine. We didn't have a wind turbine code, so we had to place the wind turbine, so we had to create a code. 
uh, solar panels. Solar panels residentially, yeah, we, we were able to deal with them, but once it came to solar farms, we had to create a zone, uh, a code, and put it in the zoning aspect. So if somebody comes in front of me, and I can't place it somewhere in our zoning code, then it has to be brought in front of the town board to create that law, and that law has to be created and put in certain zones. The town boards, the, the, the mayors, the, whoever it happens to be the, the authority in charge, puts those things in the places that they, they believe fits the master plan and is most relevant to, to what they're doing and where it's put to accommodate, you know, like I said, like the code book says, less impact to the area. So we look at that. So, you know, another thing that Airbnb does, and I know the state and counties are now looking at it, is that sales tax, occupancy taxes, those things aren't being taken care of. And I know that, that at least in Ulster County, they're looking at that, that these Airbnbs are popping up, and are they paying the occupancy tax? Are they paying Ulster County tax? Are they paying sales tax? Nobody knows because they're unregulated. And again, putting air in front of something doesn't mean that anybody could just do it and not end up in front of the planning board um, and going through the motions that, that any normal bed and breakfast you know, would have to do. So air absolute, absolutely means nothing. So if I could get any point, point across to this board, to whoever's watching, whoever's in the audience, that the word air doesn't you know, not allow them to go in front of the planning board. It has to go through the process. And, and that's just the way it is. We, we take something, we're not gonna say you can't have it, we're gonna place it in a zone, and if the zone allows it, you move forward with it under a special use, and it's regulated, so. Well, that, and that, that's my point. Things have to be regulated. You can't just do whatever you want. No, There's re laws. Regulation is great, but the dilemma is when you've got the walkway over the Hudson, you're pumping money into the, uh, into the Milton Landing Park. If people are just going to come here and visit and leave, how do we glean income off of that? We exactly how do we glean revenue? We, do, we right? don't disagree with we the bed and breakfast concept. We all agree with that, right? I mean, Absolutely. we all agree with that. We want, we want more. The thing is, it has to be owner-occupied. That's, That's all. all. If it's owner-occupied, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. If the thing is, it's in not owner-occupied. In this occupied. particular instance that you're talking about, the Dan Scammer House, has, you know, well, as That's an example, issue. when gambling was all the rage, there were town supervisors, county supervisors, they all went out to Las Vegas and they all went down to Atlantic City to see how everything worked. Well, if New York State is going to stake its claim on tourism and destination resorts, why aren't they going down to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, Bethany Beach in Delaware to see how this whole operation works? Yep. yep. Maybe that would be a good start for us. Okay, thanks, Mike. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thanks, Mike. Luke, up. Uh, the young lady behind you there. Hi, guys. Sherrod Assessa on Gala Lane in Milton. I was at the planning board meeting with you, Al, this Monday when we talked about the B&B, &B, and I agree the B&B &B would be a you know, wonderful addition to the town to have our tourists be able to stay somewhere. And I think the question that arose at that meeting was that the owner was saying that, number one, they, I guess, live right across the street and were going to be in residence whenever the rooms were actually written, rented. So they were saying that they were actually going to be owner-occupied while there were guests in the facility. So that was one of the concerns that they brought up. Also, there are four rooms that they are renting, so I don't think the 50 people, hopefully, would be a really big risk. But I guess there was just some question around the clarity of the actual law as far as that whether they have to be, it has to be the owner's primary residence at all times, whether they have to live there year round, or if they could be in residence while there are actually guests on the premises. So wondering if the board is willing to look at that from a waiver standpoint. We're willing to look at anything. We have. You cannot be across the street and call yourself owner occupancy, period. Period. You're not in the house, it's not owner occupancy. Cannot be across the street. You want to attach that house somehow? Then you're then you're owner occupied. But you're not owner occupied yeah, if you're not living in the house. There's the, I mean, there's no that. way around it. We're, we're all going around the bushes of trying to figure out how to make this work. It's clear as day. If you don't live in the house, in the house, it's not owner occupied. With that, was the 
point that the person would be the manager of the house? Is that what they were proposing? I don't, I, I honestly yeah. don't know. I mean, we could uh, certainly the, discuss the, it further. Mm -hmm. yeah. But their claim at, the, at that point was that they would be in residence at any time there was a guest yeah. in the residence. And so there was just some, some you know, gray area there, I guess. Yeah. And the, the gray area with that and also with the uh, percentage of the... Uh, right. Yeah. Residence the taken percentage off. we could deal with. That's, mm -hmm. not, that's uh, not a showstopper. Mm -hmm. And I think Mr. Corcoran already has an opinion on that. We could deal with that. Yeah. It boils down to owner occupancy. Owner occupancy. And it, again, has to be, it has to be full-time occupancy yes. is the rule. And again, I just want to state for the record, this was explained <coughs> in detail to the owner prior to them renovating. Probably two years okay, ago. Okay, so they knew about it. They ignored it. They renovated anyway. And now they want us to change the law because they just they put money into the house. Now, it looks beautiful, and I agree with the code enforcer. A great job. Mm -hmm. But they knew two years ago, before they put a nail into the wall, that it was illegal. And if they were going to do it in a certain way, there's all codes that go into effect about staircases, about walls, about studs, mm -hmm. about electric. There's a whole list of things they would have had it done. They knew about that two years ago also. But they chose to continue. And so now they want to come back to the planning board, and then maybe ultimately to ZBA, to say, we don't care what you told me two years ago, we're just gonna do what we want. That's not how it works, people. And that's what's been happening in Marlboro for the last 20, 30 years. And this, and over the, since the six years I've been on the board, we're trying to change that. Mm -hmm. We're trying to change that. You can't just do whatever you wanna do. There are laws, there's a code enforcer, and he's gonna enforce the code. And if we can change something, we will change something. All right, we, we are the most open board you're gonna ever see. We will try to help economic growth in this town by far, by any board I think that was before this. We are so open to try to get business in here. But there are laws and there has to be a law and there has to be a code enforcer that enforces those laws. And again, this person knew about this two years ago and I think they did a great job and Howard had many meetings with the code enforcer officer. Yeah, I did too. Al had many meetings with them. And they were heated meetings because we got all the follow-ups, trust me. And they chose to stand there, walk out of the room, and say, I'm doing it anyway. Well, hey, you did it, now you have to face what, what comes with it. I think the thing is once if they, they just come to the realization that it has to be home occupied because they do have so much money invested in there, mm -hmm. I think that would be great for the community. And Agreed. We'll be happy, everybody will be happy. That works for me. Thanks, Thank guys. Uh, not, you, listen, this seems like a very hot button issue. So you know, we're not we're not trying to argue no, one no, way or the no, other or no, question no. your motives. No. But there was some there was some question. There was some gray area. Have, if some family member lived there, rent it out tomorrow. Go ahead, be and be it all you want. <laughs> all That's right, so. great because we're all for it. We want that, but you, it's got to be legal. That's all. All right, it's got to be legal because if you do it for one, there's going to be a hundred of them behind you. Okay, so you got to be careful what you do. All right. God, God willing, there will be that many. That I hope there is. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, Hello. Look. Oh, we saved the, uh, we saved the best for the last. <laughs> Luke Secunda, coming in for a hair appointment, Mahoney Road. Um. This isn't about the B&B, the &B. just want to let you know. Um, Al, I want to say thank you so much for uh, been going on for a couple of years trying to get cable on my road. We have DSL, and uh, the Internet's been less than one megabyte per second. It's tough to do anything with that. <laughs> and uh, finally got cable on the road, thanks to Al, fighting for two, three years almost. And uh, finally got it done. They came in this week, banged everything out quick, in and out. And uh, yeah, my son, he's excited. I told him to come down here. He had, I'd give you a kiss, but he's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we, but, uh, we actually been going back and forth for a year and a half, right? Uh, yeah, it's been a while. I think uh, cable was bought up by a European company, Atlas or Atlas, something yeah, like that. Some, some different and, name, yeah, some different name. And I noticed that a gentleman on that was pretty high up on the cable side Dan Ahouse used to work for Maurice Hinchy, 
and so i called them up and we started dialoguing the problem was right spectra now was like eight thousand dollars to hook up to your house right meanwhile cable was maybe twenty just a couple of telephones away yeah, right two telephone poles down you know, yeah. the other one was 11 poles down and that was time warner and i was in time warner's district and cable vision was only two poles away and they wouldn't come in to time warner's district so now that everything changed they got a district changed and they allowed me yeah, to we be part of cable vision and because usually they won't compromise as far as what their district is but we right. had uh we had some correspondence between uh spectra and uh, At atlas i think is the name I, i'm not sure we'll say cable vision yeah and uh we negotiated and they decided yeah maybe it's a good thing then they went out and they said uh going to charge you $2,500 and I said no that's not fair this guy's a good guy He's, and we dealt a little bit and what and behold a year and a half later <laughs> I, right. well, I, it I tried and I couldn't get anything with those people so yeah. I mean, that's great because <laughs> that's good news Luke. that's appreciate great it. thanks uh, for uh, coming appreciate and thanking it. the board I appreciate it thank you I appreciate your help thank yep. you yeah, happy that's, how they, that's how they ended up doing it so we district in it to the other district well, it's it's just like anything else in life and politics. It's who you know, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's really good. You know, we started, uh, but I thought it was going to happen a lot sooner, Luke, but we got there. Yeah. That's the main thing. Now your daughters could be in the 21st century with homework and stuff like that, right? 50-50. Yeah. That's what we do. Okay, public comments are all done. You sure? Yep. Thanks, uh, James. Thanks, James. Thank you. So let's go to resolutions. Uh, resolution 84 to invite bids for the exterior rehabilitation of Milton train station, whereas the town of Marble has been allocated a $150,000 state and municipal facility program grant. Uh, called SAM for the rehabilitation of the exterior of the Milton train station. And whereas a bid package has been prepared by Crawford and Stearns, be it resolved that the town board, board authorize the publication of the invitation to bid with sealed bid responses accepted until 2.30 p.m. August 30th, 2017, at which time the bids will be open and read out loud. And hopefully, that uh, that'll be done with the train station, huh? Yep. Ten years in the making. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Corcoran. So Al, thank you for keep keeping on this because uh, uh, thank you. this was a year and a half, <laughs> and I know how I personally know how hard this is to get this money. I mean, uh, I've done this, and uh, you were successful. So uh, a year and a half, good congratulations. So, thank you. Uh, thank you. Absolutely yes. Councilman yeah. Molinelli. Yes. Councilman Baker? Yes. Supervisor Lanzetta? Yes. Thank you. Thank you to the board. Yep. Okay. I need a motion. I make a motion to adjourn. The meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.